Number one then from the 2006 Higher Maths Paper 2, Lines and Properties of a Parallelogram. Now part B asks you to find the coordinates of Q and the coordinates of R. And since this is a parallelogram with a right angle here, that can be done without using the equations of lines at all, just by using distances and translations. However, the first part does say find the equation of a line, so that's guiding you to that method of finding it. That method would be, if I knew the equation of this line, I could find the point where it cuts the x-axis, because I know the y-coordinate is zero. And if I know this point here, I know that the move from P to S is the same move from Q to R, so I'd simply move by the same amount, and that would take me to R. So, find the equation of SQ, writing it in this form. Well, since it's at right angles, I can get its gradient from the gradient of the line it's at right angles to, which is PS. So, first step, what's the gradient of PS? Well, that will be the distance up over the distance along. Since I've got this diagram, I don't need to write 2, 0 going to 4, 6. So that'll be the difference in the y's. I'll start at this one. 6 take away 0. Make sure you don't mix them up. Difference in the x's, the first coordinates, 4 take away 2 in the same order. We'll end up with a negative answer. So that's 6 over 2, which is 3. That's the first mark. Now the gradient of SQ, or QS it says, can be found from that because it's at right angles. The product of the gradients is negative one. Now you probably don't need to mention that, but I think I'll just put that down by way of explanation. The gradient of the line QS is the negative of the reciprocal. If you divide by negative one by the gradient of PS, you'll get the answer. So that'll be negative one third. That's the second mark. Now the third mark will be for finding the equation of the line either using the y minus b form or the y equals mx plus c. Now, strictly speaking, you should use, only use y equals mx plus c when you know where it cuts the y-axis, because then you can just feed the number straight in. So you're probably better using the y minus b form here. I'll put it down anyway. So what is qs? Well, y minus b is mx minus a. And the only point I know in this line, I'll just put a note of it here, is the point 4, 6. I've got the gradient negative a third and the point 4, 6. So y minus the y-coordinate, 6, is negative a third of x minus the x-coordinate, which is 4. That's your third mark out of the 4. Now in this case, you have to tidy this up, and you have to tidy up into this form here, because that's what you're required to show. And don't just jump straight from there to there, because you're not showing any working. All you're doing is copying this down. You have to show some intermediate working before you arrive at that form. So the proper thing to do here would be, it's an equation with a fraction, get rid of the fractions, multiply everything by 3. So I've got 3y minus 18. And this side you're left with negative 1 times that equals negative x, but that will be plus 4. Now we can jump straight over to taking that across x and the 3y, and I don't need to show 4 plus 18, I can just go straight in with 22 for the fourth mark. Now that's probably the better form for finding the equation of a line, when you don't know where it cuts the y-axis. If you did know where it cuts the y-axis, then you'd be better off going in with y equals mx plus c. But you don't here, or rather you don't know it immediately, although you can infer it from the diagram. You can still use that if you wish, but you probably wouldn't. I know the gradient already is negative a third. What C, where does it cut the y-axis? Well, I could find that out by substituting a point in. I've got an equation, there'd be three unknowns, y, x, and C. And if I put in known values for two of them, I could find C. But you could also get C by using the gradient. The gradient of that line is negative a third. A gradient of negative a third means for one step along, it goes down a third of a step. So you could reverse that to see where it would hit the y-axis. That would say then that for one step back, or for each step back, you would climb a third. So if you're at four along, taking four steps back, this line would climb four lots of a third, which is one and one third. So if it's at 6 already, it means it'd be 6 plus 4 lots of a third, which is 7 and a third, or 22 upon 3. 
And then multiplying by 3 gives you that equation. So you've got 3 times everything, 3y plus it minus an x, bring it over as plus an x, 3 times that equals 22, there you are. Not quite sure how they would mark that for the expressions you put in here. You'd probably have to give a reason for that, 22 upon 3, maybe something similar to this. But if you were using this form, you'd probably say this, first of all. You'd probably say, well, it equals that. So that's still not a mark. Then you'd put in the points. You'd say, well, when y is 6, x is 4, which means that c is 6 plus that, 6 plus 4 upon 3, which means that c equals 22 upon 3. So there's your reason for that. That gets you a mark. And then finishing it off, because that was the first, the second, the third mark, finishing it off as before would be, you've got y equals negative a third x plus 22 upon 3, multiplying it out, again, don't just put it straight into that form, 3y is negative x plus 22, and then x plus 3y equals 22 for the fourth mark, if you wanted to do it that way. But you can see how much longer that is than this. That's the form when you don't know where it cuts the y-axis. That's the form when you do know where it cuts the y-axis. Now part B. Knowing the equation of that line, what are the coordinates of Q, and from that, what are the coordinates of R for one mark each? Well, knowing the equation of that line, here's a point on the line, so its coordinates have to satisfy this equation. And if you know one of them, you can find the other. And if you're on the x-axis, you know one of them. You know that at Q, the y-coordinate is 0. So you can find the x-coordinate from that. Well, putting that into that straight away, that would say x plus 3y. So if you like, I could put the working x plus 3 lots of 0 is 22. That means the x-coordinate is 22. So Q is the point 22, 0. That's the mark. Now for the point R. This is where displacements will come in, equal moves. Since it's a parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel and equal. Same distance, same direction. So the move from P to S is the same as the move from Q to R. So I know the move QR. QR is the same as PS. And I'll just put it down in component form, the vector form. How do you get from P to S? I'm not going to put all the working down, you can just use the numbers. How do you get from 2 to 4? You go 2 along. How do you get from 0 to 6? You go 6 up. Remember, in the vectors, don't confuse that with gradients, where it's the difference in y over the difference in x. Because with the gradients, it's the climbing that matters. This is just a move, that's the x component, that's the y component. So that means to get to r, I would take that move from q. Well, R must be, well, what was Q? It was at 22, 0. What's this move I need to make? Add 2 to the X, add 6 to the Y. So that means that R is the point 24, 6. And there's the second mark for part B and the sixth mark of the whole question. Now, if this question had simply said, what are the coordinates of Q and R, you could have done it without using the equation of a line. And if you wanted the equation of the line, you could have found the equation of QS directly from S and Q, in effect, done the question backwards. But you probably wouldn't have. You'd have gone straight in with lines. It's going to be quicker that way. I'll mention this way anyway. The way you would do that would be to realise you've got a right angle triangle so that you could equate the distances to find the coordinates of Q. I'll just give Q the coordinates of X0. You could call that X some other letter if you wish, but I'm just going to stick with X. Now, since that's a right angle triangle, Pythagoras supplies. PQ squared must be PS squared plus SQ squared. Now, how do you find these distances? Well, PQ is an easy one because it's a horizontal line. That will just be the difference in the X coordinates since there's no difference in the Y's. So it's just X minus 2. So if the length of PS is X minus 2, its squared is X minus 2 squared. How do you get PS squared? You use its own little right angle triangle. Difference in X is squared plus difference in Y is squared. Difference in the X is squared, 2 to 4, is 2 squared. Differences in the Y squared, 0 up to 6 is 6 squared. 
we will just bracket them to show the, the two separate parts. What about SQ squared? Same again. You've got your own little right angle triangle. Differences in the X's squared would be, it goes from 4 to X. So it would be X minus 4 squared. Differences in the Y squared. Now it doesn't matter which direction you're going because I'm squaring it. 0 to 6 is a 6 squared. Now there's quite a lot of work in doing this. Because those brackets aren't the same, so I'll need to expand them. So here I've got, squaring the bracket, x squared minus twice the product, 4x plus 4 equals, get all these numbers together, that's a 4 and a 36. Multiplying out this bracket, x squared minus twice the product, 8x plus 16. And there's another 36. Now at least the x squareds will cancel out. Bringing that 8x over to join that, would give you a plus 8x minus 4 is just 4x. Then all these numbers, well, taking that 4 away cancels that out. So effectively, you've just got the 36, the 36, and the 16. So that would be 88, which means that x equals 22, and q is the point 22, 0. Now notice, if you decided to do it this way, and you wouldn't, it won't just be one mark for finding q, because... Now you can find the equation of SQ without having to find the gradient of PS first of all, and then using the connection between the two. So part A would no longer be worth four marks, it'd only be worth three marks. And there'd be three marks for part B. So this part would be two marks. The marks probably coming in here and somewhere about here. And then to find R, be just, now it's just the same as before. So R is going to be... Well, Q was at 22, 0, and since PS was 2 along 6 up, that means that R is going to be that plus 2, that plus 6, so R is going to be 24, 6. That would be mark number 3. And then you can get SQ directly, so you'd find the gradient of QS, difference in Y, difference in X, Y coordinates, 0 take away 6 x coordinates 22 remember take away 4 so that's negative 6 over 18 so qs is negative 1 third for a mark y minus b equals mx minus a using the point well you could use either point now so better off using this point because it's got a 0 in it 22 0 y minus 0 is negative a third of x minus 22. Take the 3 across and multiply it, that would be another mark. And then for the final mark, 3y equals negative x plus 22. Take the 3 across and multiply, so it's just negative 1 times then. And move it across to the final answer. So doing it this way would effectively be doing the whole question backwards. The only interesting thing here would be this. Now it's much longer, but it is a piece of algebra that could be useful in diagrams. And some of those questions you get, especially those questions that involve optimization, where you've got some diagram and you have to derive some equa generalized equation from it. So there you are.